Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turtle Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, sports, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Pierre Miliotis. On Twitter, you know me as PD Beats. My guest this afternoon, well, it's the afternoon here. I think it's the morning for him over there. But uh, It's the morning out here. <laughs> yeah. My guest is an actor or a storyteller is what I like to call my uh, my guest, um, you r- will recognize him from movies like Pirates of the Caribbean, shows like Once Upon a Time, and Seinfeld. We were with Lee Ehrenberg. Lee, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Good morning, Petey. Hi, buddy. How's it going? Thank Thanks you for, for coming on the show, man. Yeah, it's great, dude. Yeah, happy to be on, man. Thanks for inviting me. So I just wanted like kind of an icebreaker question. Um, when did you, like I mentioned, like I call like actors writers you know musicians like storytellers when did you decide that you want to be a storyteller man real young dude i was a young kid i just got you know i got like seduced by the applause for sure you know as a young like maybe eight years old in the hebrew school play yeah. playing david killing goliath singing a song getting the standing O. I i was hooked <laughs> a lot of people start like is that like a a big, not stigma, like theater that all actors have started in theater. I feel like there's a lot of people like on screen that started in theater. That's the place to learn your craft. I mean, there's something about, you know, the theater is a live experience. In our world history, the theater was a sacred place thousands of years ago. The art of storytelling, just the way you said it, I really appreciate you saying it, calling the artist a storyteller. Mm -hmm. Um... And it was with the rise of the church, they got in competition. Suddenly the church's stories were better theater. They would give out the sacrament as a snack to encourage the audience, you know? And um, then they vilified the theater, the storytelling. If you weren't telling these stories, you were the, you know, and so for thousands of years, uh, actors were no actors or dogs allowed all over the world, Mm -hmm. right? And then it was only the, since the movie screen and the TV screen were invented that we gained this rise of cult of personality, become bigger than we are. But it all comes back down to to telling a good story. Uh, When the teachers, like I like to say, the teachers, the plumbers of the world are the real heavy lifters of society. And when the soldier's tired and he needs to laugh or cry to be able to go and fight the battle the next day, that's where the storyteller comes in, right? Oh, for sure. No, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but for sure, you get to, theater is the way to learn your craft, and there's there's no better connection and instant reward for did you do a good job or a shitty job, you know? Oh no, hundred um, percent. I mentioned in your intro, you've been in some amazing movies, like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and I, I mentioned it before I started. Yeah. You scared. You scared me as as a child. I remember your character <laughs> scared me. What was kind of? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I mean it, it must have been cool to kind of like play a role like that, and the reception oh, that, was incredible. Yeah, for sure, dude, that was awesome. Just to land the part was cool. You know, um, that was a big thing. I was just in, in a part of my career where I wasn't getting. You know, I hadn't had really a crack. I'd had a few good character roles over the years, but being an actor is frustrating, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was some good emotional payback to land that sucker. No, sure. absolutely. And, and then also we have to mention it because I told my sister, I was having you, like, my sister is a huge Seinfeld fan. Like I'm pretty sure Seinfeld is like a oh. huge part. So <laughs> you're, you had an episode of Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah, two. two. Two episodes. And it, yeah. yeah, no, it's just the Susie episode, man. That's that. That's a great episode. Yeah, well, that character's first in the parking space, like five seasons earlier. Mm-hmm. He gets in a big beef with George over a parking spot, <laughs> and then, but he also tells Jerry that he's a phony, and so Jerry doesn't like him. And then five years later, they see they run into him on the street. Yeah, and that was the Susie. What yeah. I find interesting about Seinfeld is it's such a big show and episodes have so much like episodes are so memorable that you could do like one or two episodes like your character and the show's been mm-hmm. on for so many years and people like remember it 
so much, yeah. right? It's like amazing. Same with like the soup Nazi episode, right? That was like the one episode. Yeah. Like it's just that's amazing to me, right? Well, great writing, um, and also like generosity. Like most sitcoms, they want the stars to be the funny. But on Seinfeld, it was wherever the story went. So when the guest stars would get that ball and get those funny lines and the memorable, you know, it was just a, I think the other thing too, is that the writing, since the show technically is about nothing, in a lot of ways, it can still play 20 years later. Mm -hmm. Because it's more about, it's more like a snapshot of life in the 90s. Oh, absolutely. No, it's just... it's yeah. fun. It's funny though because we were thinking about. I was thinking about it. Like all the main characters, Kramer is the only one that's not like. But I just find like, and they even admit it. I mean, they're all like, they're not the best people. No, they're not. They're, <laughs> they're all selfish. They're they talk about it right. In fact, that in that last episode of uh, of the the uh, the final very final one. They, you know, they think about all the people that show up in the court to convict those guys, right? Yeah. They were all the characters that on the outside seem proper. Because people were like, why weren't you in that? It goes, well, because I'm a criminal. He wouldn't, a bookie wouldn't get up on and testify that that wouldn't be a good character witness to like denigrate the other people, right? Because he himself would be compromised. So all those characters that come in to testify about how bad the woman with the marble rye and all that stuff. <laughs> they were the- <laughs> man, no, like it, it's, there's a lot of sci-fi watching that happens in this household, man. Like I'm not gonna. Oh, lie it's you. <laughs> very. You know what? It's the universal. There's just something about it. You know, we can all relate to getting to the bakery and not getting the the right loaf of bread for the out the party or. Having to steal it from an old lady. That's I love sure. the bake yeah. the bakery episode with the chocolate babka is probably <laughs> yeah. like I just because there's so many things that happen in the episode. The Gore Tex coat, like you want you know, they gotta get yeah. the bottle of wine, the parking spot. Like, I don't know. It's just like you're actually They have this, a lot of issues. They have a lot of issues. For sure. You're actually the second Seinfeld guest on Pop Turnip because we had Rick Overton who played the Drake. Yeah, <laughs> he's been on the show. <laughs> they so, had a lot of cool people, man. They had a lot of cool people, and uh, you know, there's definitely whenever I travel, especially to the East Coast, that's a real like depending on the demographic of the fan, I can pretty much tell what someone's coming up to me to go, "Hey, I love you." In the this, yeah, that and them saying it, you know. Uh, and the Seinfeld fans tends to be anyone in New York or Jersey or Philly area. Do you get rec- It's funny because do you get rec? I, I wanted to ask you this: like, do you get? Do you ever get recognized for like your roles in like Once Upon a Time or Pirates of the Caribbean? Like, does that, did that ever happen? Like, you'd be at basically the store and someone's like, "Hey, I know." Like, did that ever happen? All the all the time, all the time. And yeah. I'm sure, like, and, and I'm sure you know you're never like it's part of the job and it's a blessing too, right? Like, you're never gonna get tired of that. You know what? It e, e, as long as the interaction's about the fan, it's good for me. If it becomes about me, then maybe it's a problem. But yeah. you know what I mean? Like, no, it's no, no. Cool, I, know, I know what you mean. It's a burden. You know, it's a burden. It, it's like because honestly, with a lot of actors, sometimes you don't work for a while, then you're feeling shitty about yourself, and sometimes oh, yeah. it tells you how awesome you are, and you're like, you just gotta live the life. Well, it's funny because few- it's yeah. funny because two things about that. Like one, I got Carl McDowell, an actor who's on Ballers with the, the Rock at HBO. He said mm-hmm. every time he is recognized, it's like the worst time. Like he's like, I'm. He's like, he'll be at Ralph's like doing groceries, and like he's like <laughs> just in sweatpants. Someone's like, hey, it's TD for Ballers, and he's like, it, like why can't you just like find me when I was you know going out on like a Saturday night? <laughs> like and recognize me yeah, there's that it doesn't work like that yeah, yeah. and then ryan it's sands the price was, of it ryan sands who's yeah. on the wire and marvel's the runaways said that we talked about like he says the three places where it's very awkward where like you have the fan interactions is like obviously like one when people like go to people's houses which i find is like the weirdest thing to me yeah because it does yeah. i'm sure it happens That's but also definitely. public public restrooms <laughs> Is another. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, like I, I definitely see, but no, but the thing is, I mean, it, it's one of those things where Pirates of the Caribbean, um, the fan base has been, um, 
it was it was such a big fan base, and I think it was like Disney really like promoted it. Like I remember, like that's what I got for Christmas, man. Was like the the Pirates of the Caribbean mm. DVD, right? That was like the big yeah, gift, right? Yeah. Um, so that was huge, huge in the DVD world. The truth is that when we made Pirates, the Disney wasn't sure that what they had, right? They were confused for sure about Johnny's character, and uh, they also bet heavily that same year on Haunted Mansion. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the kind of tie-ins from the companies were for Haunted Mansion, like Taco Bell or what you, what you will, and then all the action figures. Pirates didn't have any. Yeah. So the audience, the audience is what let Disney know Pirates was the hit. The fact that it stayed in theaters for nine, ten months. It was when the second Pirate came out, it was the first movie where we had multiple screens and multiplexes. Mm-hmm. Right. That was that concept where they'll take three theaters for one big hit movie. And it kind of changed. It kind of changed movies there for a while uh, in terms of now we just everyone's looking for the blockbuster, the blockbuster. Right? No, absolutely. That's so that's interesting that you say that. What do you kind of think about the current landscape of kind of digital media um, and, you know, streaming and everything like everything? It's going to change every year. And I think. We still don't understand it completely, especially like social media. Like the interactions is like insane, like on Instagram and everything. What do you kind of think? Because, you know, when Pirates was out, none of this existed. So can you imagine a world where that existed when Pirates was out? Well, then word of mouth meant something, right? People Mm -hmm. actually had to like pick up a phone or the very least, you know, maybe text, right? Because that would have been 2000, the first one, 2003 three four something mm-hmm. when it came out so yeah it was pre all the social media stuff um well you know i sure i think it helps it helps spread the word faster obviously now in our you know in our society now the the world is much more connected through it mm-hmm. um and that can work both ways right so pirates came out at a time where uh i think we were ready for a pirate movie there's something about it like the I always thought that Jack Sparrow represents like a nonconformist in an ever conforming world. That's what the pirate, the rock and roll pirate. Right. Live your life. Be free or die kind of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's an interesting message for a movie and, and great writers. Obviously, the guys that wrote Pirates wrote Shrek, wrote Aladdin, wrote so many of the great you know, movies of, of all time. And uh it's again, it's a science creating good stories. 100%. There's only 33 dramatic plots possible. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, right? There's only so, so many. So it's what world do you set it in? What are the in, you know intricacies of the character development, the relationships? Mm-hmm. No, right. it's, it's an amazing world. We're going to get into like hockey soon. Before that, I have one other question I wanted to ask you because it's one of those things where I always ask this question. It's become kind of like a hallmark for pop alternative, but I always ask about misconceptions of the industry. Lee. That's always what I ask. You know what I mean? Because I'm okay. curious because, you know, hockey players, musicians, actors, you know, they all have different things about the industry. I want to know from your perspective, what are, you know, the biggest misconceptions about the the like mu- like the 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 film industry you know what I mean as being an actor because everyone on social media thinks they know about everything and just assume things all the time yeah. and a lot of people have I'm kind of worried sometimes of giving examples of past answers because it's always usually like then you'd be like yeah I agree all those all of the above but yeah. you know the fact that people get a role and then people assume that was their first role ever and they was they weren't working and and uh, mm. like working hard for like 10 years before that, you know what I mean? Or that everyone, you, you land a big movie and you're just, boom, a millionaire right away. Like there's a lot of stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, uh, well, all the, all, the, all the above. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a tough ride, you know? It's a tougher ride than people probably give it credit for. You might have a kind of, you definitely work 20 years to get discovered overnight, you know, in, in Hollywood. Um, you get a good break. You might work consistently and make a lot of dough, but then you might not work for a year. The fo- you just are out of flavor. The phone's not ringing. You can't land it. You know, it's, they don't like you, whatever it is, right? So you just keep, it's something you just keep trying. It's, you know, in a sports analogy, you know, as an actor, you have to bat a thousand. 
You know, 300 makes the Hall of Fame in pro baseball. 300 doesn't get you ever a job. If you're, you know, you have 10 laughs to get in the show, you got to get, find a way to get 10 laughs. Yeah. So the, the auditions, like, I feel like that's the, basically a misconception. People, I don't think, understand how many auditions actors are doing. Yeah. Oh, you know, and that's <laughs> the scary. It's scary. You don't feel very secure doing it. Um, you do the best you can, you know. Uh, there's a lot of judgment in it. Uh, so you have to wrestle with that, man. We all wrestle with that. Do you think that's why... It. <laughs> you know, a lot of do you, anxiety do you think that's why tv has become more competitive too because if you get a show like a recurring role in a show for you know three four seasons or like a like a, even like a guest role that you show up i mean that's steady work right it's steady work but they squeeze it you know 10 15 years ago if you'd gotten that you would have been set for a while to have a seven year run in a kind of role like i had on once you know and yeah. uh but if you read about it, there's been a lot of articles, kind of how they margin. They pay every all the money to the top. Mm -hmm. And then everyone else kind of goes with whatever the standard deals are. Mm -hmm. So the middle kind of class actor gets squeezed just like the middle class human is getting squeezed in our society. You know, it's mm -hmm. more challenging. Um, that had a great run, though. That spot being time. said, what's that? One Spot Time had a very good run. I'm just mentioning it. Oh killer it was so yeah. you know awesome but but i mean we're talking about like the darkness of the industry mm -hmm. you know and then there's then there's always like you know that you know you uh you want to work uh but it's the work's grueling you know the long hours of the shoots it's how hard the crews work on the on the especially on tv oh man you know? it's insane that would be the that would be the challenge for the average person. I would say that they don't know is how hard everyone really works. Maybe not yeah. the actors. We're we're in charge of being emotionally available and coming through in the clutch, like four in the morning in a in a frigid Canadian evening, and you know we have to be funny, you no, know, or whatever it is. But the crew guys are out there in the elements the whole time, uh, and that's a. 14 hour day usually camera days on tv is 14 12 to 14 every day that's crazy that's that's no, not brutal so yeah you're yeah. a big you're a big hockey fan and like it's all i, I love i'm a big sports fan sports big yeah sports fan sports yeah, are huge I, man and you said that you you actually like were in canada for quite some time at one point right 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 well once upon a time shot in vancouver right yep. so i like did watch a lot of hockey and got yep. to know the game because obviously the canadians you know the coverage of tsn and sportsnet's much more thorough for hockey here it's it gets big in the playoffs no doubt and we have the nbcsn on cable but like in terms of a network presence for sports but to get to know the game to hear the mckenzie's and the kind of subtle commentary about the younger players and the systems and i mean it's a hard game to figure out when you didn't grow up playing it really Oh yeah, and uh, but it is. I got to say, it's one of the best spectator sports when you go live to see hockey. It's fun, eh? The, There's so much energy. Yeah. yeah, and especially if you know if your team's winning, it's even better. <laughs> I honestly I mean? think that you're gonna see hockey explode these next couple of years because i'm telling you right now lee there are some players in the nhl drafts coming up kind of like you see with basketball because i feel like yeah. there's always an opportunity when these big players and these big prospects come up there's going to be more hype and i truly think that that aspect like will add on to more tickets so like people want to see it do you know what i mean like people are talking about yeah Duke, so who's like, the number one guy for the next draft is so this Hughes next draft is it's jack hughes from usa's national yeah. team development program and yeah. he is like yeah. gonna be incredible and a lot of people you can read about it it's gonna be amazing and people are saying you know back in the day it was like Crosby came along, and then it was like McDavid. But now you get one every year. Like we had, like Rasmus Dahlin last year is going to be an amazing defenseman. Next year's Jack. I've got Hughes. him on my fantasy team. He hasn't done much yet. Hey, he's young. He's you got to give him there. time. Um, and then Jack Hughes, and then next year Alexi Lafreniere, who mm. is playing for Ramuski Lee. You're gonna you're gonna remember that name because he's gonna be amazing. So every year there's like a generational talent coming in in hockey. 
Like every year there's a huge new name adding. So mm-hmm. it's just like I feel I feel like if that doesn't make the sport sport explode, like I don't know what will. Because it's so exciting to see the talent every year, the consistent amount of talent coming in the NHL. Like I just get excited talking about it because it's amazing. Well, you're you're more geeked up than the average, you know, probably <laughs> about it. <laughs> but but I would say that like but you, you, you that just call energy. did you just call me a geek on my own show did that just happen yeah, well i mean i called you and I, with all due respect you know like, no i'm just choking you're the passion i know <laughs> but uh don't you think like the nhl blew it by not like letting everyone go play in the olympics i mean that go- that's something that's been debated for forever and like you know you can go on like social media to see that i mean they want to like yeah the growing of the game is something that you want to do and and the, the olympics is definitely that big like that that big you know opportunity that big pedestal yeah. to kind of promote the game so a lot of people like like that that was that was rough to see on social media like social media was is insane with that yeah, but I think that, and also I think that it's a tough TV game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like just the coverage. It's hard to cover it properly. Yeah. So that you could just hard to it's hard to relate to how fast they're skating, and how just physically grueling the sport is, and how like to feel the you know there's something about feeling the energy of the hits mm-hmm. and the you know that you can only feel live, and so. Now I'm hoping. I don't know. It's interesting. I'm hoping the answer to this question is yes, but because if it's no, then I am requesting that you and your son kind of jump on the bandwagon and like watch it this holiday season. Do you watch the World Junior Hockey Championship? The World Junior Hockey? I mean, uh, we watched it once. One time, he says, and it was awesome, right? right? I think a good. T- I love tournament hockey, dude. This right? is the World yeah. Juniors in Canada. Is like. Mm. becoming as big like it's becoming like i'm not even kidding you when i say this like it's like super bowl big like mm. I, it's huge well, I know. because I it's mean, the best it's know, the best yeah. under 20 right yeah i mean it's great to see i like to see the young guys i like to see all the youth in uh the nhl for sure follow that you tournament know? that is a good tournament all right. It's amazing right, hockey you make sure to remind me on twitter oh yeah, i will you because you you're probably. gonna text me and be like wow you were right. Like this tournament is insane, and you get so invested because it's the future, and people are very interested in the future all the yeah. time, right? Because you kind but of you're and- more jazzed about it. You're more jazzed than the average bear about the hockey. You know uh, what I mean? Like we have a lot of, like LA. I'll tell you something. Like we have the we have a real loyal fan base. We had we just lost our sellout streak after I don't know how many games in a row for the Kings. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it's a full. You know they get eighteen thousand pretty much every game, and. Uh, the kids are really playing it here, so that's your best chance to grow it. Like they they play hockey and then they surf, and the Kings are actually building a big rink in the Valley, San Fernando Valley, to take advantage of that, so we can get more. You'll see a lot of when you see us starting to see more like Brooks Orpix and like California based NHLers, then you'll know it's. I mean Austin and, Matthews from Phoenix and whatever. So And that's the thing. I just want to let you know that I'm with you. Like I'm a sports fan. The reason why Pop Turnative has a lot of hockey is because like you said, I'm yeah. like one, I'm a geek. And two, yeah. that's kind of like my network, right? Like that's where I yeah. kind of grew yeah. up. I know a lot of people, but I love all sports. I just want to say I think it's really cool that your son surfs. I just want to say that. And I wish him oh, all yeah, the best with that. Practicing his pop up on the floor. Right now. And I and I, I wish him all the best with that because that's amazing to me. That's awesome. Yeah, well, he's cool. He does. Uh, he plays baseball. Baseball season. He plays right now. We still have flag football going on. Very cool. And uh, and then a little bit of golf, but surfing's the new kind of like I want to. He wants to do that every day. So. No, amazing. That's awesome. Well, well, time. Lee, I think we'll wrap up. But I just want to say thank you so much for right, coming buddy. on Pop Turnative, man. Dude, really enjoyed it, man. And I'm a big fan. And keep up the great work. And, uh, you know, lots of love, brother. Thank you, man. Where can people follow you on social media? Where can they keep up? Uh, best one's probably my Twitter, at Lee Ehrenberg. That's the one that's most active with, uh, you know, that I pay the most attention to. Absolutely. It's like I take all my social media with a grain of salt. Oh, you know of course. I, mean? I think you have to, though. <laughs> yeah. <absolutely. laughs> Perfect, man. 
Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for the video episodes, iTunes, Spotify, if you just want to listen. Until next time, this is Lee Ehrenberg and PD Beats. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.